There it is. Schaffler, you can't beat him. No, no point. No point. Appreciate all the other takes we had, but uh, Scheffler is unbeatable. I said on Twitter, I said in 30 years, in 2054, there's going to be like seven people at the Masters dinner if it keeps up like this. He's just going to hand himself jackets every year. Do yeah, agree? I agree. I agree. Um, it felt like if you were going to get it, he hit he hit three of his first seven greens in regulation and was hanging out at six. And the golf course was a little bit easier on Sunday than it had been the previous couple of days. And um, it felt like you had to capitalize on getting to six and making some noise and going out and, and getting a really low one on the front. Because if you let Scheffler linger, uh, I think we all knew the inevitability that was going to happen. And, you know, birdie on eight, birdie on nine, birdie on 10, while everybody around him was simultaneously falling apart. And that's what it feels like. Now I talked about this in, in the podcast I did yesterday with, with Huey, but Flexible. there's, there's leaderboard gravity now with the guy where not only does it feel like Scheffler is going to alpha everybody, but it feels like players that are around him on the leaderboard feel him coming and respond accordingly. Right. Like it, it, in a, in a 30 minute stretch, we not only had Scheffler make his charge, but we had all of his closest peers and competitors simultaneously fall apart at the same time. And yeah, that, but I think I still think that, I still think that Morikawa and Homa out. I mean, they played to their ceiling at the Masters. I just think that Scheffler's ceiling is so high, mm -hmm. and uh, I think the I honestly believe that a lot of these guys, in particular Rory, in particular Rory, over the next several years, now that he has to beat Scheffler at the Masters, considering the performance he put up. I think the only person that's going to give him some smoke is uh Aubert. Yeah. Which would be yeah. a nice battle, you know? Yeah. No, I I I I didn't think that you were going to bring up Rory, so I'm going to I'm going to move on from that one fairly quickly. Uh but I thought about what that must have been like for Rory and Xander playing with somebody that knowing how much better he was and is than those guys right now and how that must feel for a guy that was over the last decade in Rory's case at worst, the fifth best player in the world over the last sure. 10 years at any point. And w if you ever want like a master class, you can do it on the master's website. It's, it's wonderful. If anyone is like, I don't really get the Scheffler thing. Why is he so good? Why is he so much better than everyone else? Go back on, go back to Friday afternoon at the Masters in the toughest conditions that we have seen um, in, a in a professional golf tournament in the last five years. We have not seen a golf course play four strokes over par in any major over the last five years. And that's what Augusta did on Friday afternoon. Go back and watch Scheffler play those 18 holes on Friday afternoon in the wind, and then go watch Rory play those 18 holes. And I think you'll get you'll you'll get a pretty clear picture of why one player is better than the other. Yeah. Plus, Scheffler operates in this Zen-like state on the golf course. Um, I don't know. I mean, we can move on from the Masters, but yeah. you know, he's he's everything that. Well, and here's what I don't want to move on from. I think that what we discussed in terms of the actual build. From my side, it was basically a Scheffler lock until I talked myself out of it. I did about 70%, and then I put Rom, either Rom or Scheffler, max one of those two, and Rom mm -hmm. was a mistake. Yeah, me too. Um, the problem was, and I, if, if someone said Fleetwood's going to finish third, Scheffler's going to win, uh, Cam Young's going to be in the mix, I thought I have this sealed. I have it sealed up. 
-hmm. The problem is the contest is so big that you really had to have everything on the screws. Uh, no more Kawa, no Bryson. That's unfortunate, and I should have listened to Tony. Uh, not enough Obear, and um, and then Kirk was out. I like Kirk, but he was outplayed by Hoygaard. Hoygaard was really the key at the mm -hmm. same. Yeah, but. But really, it's and Matsuyama played terribly. That was the biggest part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to have a lock conviction, you can't. It's 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 more difficult to do player two and player three. You can do it, but it's riskier to do them also at a heavy rate. Just have a bigger player pool, thin it out, get one of everyone, get one of Olafabel, just get one of everyone, uh, because you have one of six locked, which Scheffler locked, and he played. And now this week, this week, um, I just saw a tweet last night where he's in Dallas. Obviously, went home. Yeah. But uh, do we believe he actually plays this week? He just wanted to go home. There's no way he plays the Heritage. Um, he get he's going to get fined if he doesn't. Not that money's an issue for him these days. But uh, you remember last year, Rory skipped the Heritage and he got a pretty significant fine. Uh, I I don't think that. You know, that's it's in Scheffler's DNA to take this week off if he knows that he already committed to it and it's his responsibility. I think we're we're one week closer to I don't really understand the withdraw narrative based on his wife going into labor. She's like th she's doing like three weeks. Um, I but I, I don't it know seems if people... Like people are grasping for straws, but I think the only hope that Scotty doesn't pay this week is if um his baby comes a little bit earlier than expected. And from what I've heard, the first usually comes late. So I would expect Sheffler yeah, to play true. this week. I, I would I, expect Sheffler to play this week. I'm convinced many people on Twitter and in our Discord don't know how babies work. <laughs> or, or maybe <laughs> our baby. A lot of people on the broadcast, I think, I think did it. Or, or I don't know if that was just a convenient storyline for them to latch on to to provide people hope, but I did that baby wasn't coming this week. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think it's coming this week either. No, she looks to be okay, but you never know. And the, never here's know. the problem with that. Here's the problem with that. I, I just saw an article about Rory. This is from the daily caller. I haven't read it, but the title is live offered or offers, which is more contemporary. Eight fifty. 850 million to Rory. Uh, if you've got to face Scheffler for the next 20 years, 15 years, is Rory taking 850 million from Liv? He's gone kind of. He's gone kind of quiet. <laughs> yeah, um, I wasn't. I frankly wasn't prepared to have that conversation either, uh, but. I, I would, I would be, I, I would be fairly surprised. Um, I have been, in my opinion, particularly over the last like six to eight months, I think pretty fair on live. I've really softened my stance on a lot of the live stuff, even to the point where I think you need to be paying attention to it, to have a, a real beat on trying to predict these major championships. Now, um, it's yeah, going to get you. It's, it's going to get you in trouble sometimes too, because I I was really convinced that Rom was going to have a a good week, but I think it's a little silly to suggest on both sides of this, by the way, that everybody that took the money from Liv, <clears throat> John Rom, is entirely happy and at peace with their decision and made the right decision. Just like there are many people on the PGA Tour that turned down a Liv offer and probably wish that they took that live offer at one point. So I don't know if Rory looks at the position that John Rahm is in right now and is envious of that, particularly for a player that has money, more money already than he know, knows what to do with. I mean, whether Scheffler continues to win all of these golf tournaments or not, um, Rory has generational wealth and is too good of a player to ever fall outside of the PGA tour top five for the next five to seven years. Um, yeah, and I, I don't, I, think, I don't, I don't know if he looks at live 
as him going to live as being the key uh, to having more preparation to beat a player like Scotty Scheffler in these major championships, which are the only four weeks of the year that he cares about anyway at this point and probably cares about to a fault. If we're being they'll honest. bend, they'll bend the schedule for Rom, but it's going to affect everyone else. I know they probably want to play seventy-two holes to get some sort of world golf rankings, uh, but they just don't play enough in general. I mean, Liv just doesn't have a huge schedule in general. So, yeah, when he's when he finishes what sixteen shots behind Scotty Scheffler, which is probably one of his worst finishes ever, Rom. When he, yeah, that's yeah. That, He's not going to be happy. He's a very competitive person. Now, moving on. So, so um, Scheffler playing this week. I mean, I, I here's the thing with the PGA Tour. They're running out of these premier elite sponsors. RBC is obviously one of the top, right? And that's why these players have to show up because RBC, you know, puts a ton of dough into this. They don't want to lose them, and they want the big names there. So um, you can't force someone to do that. Scotty Scheffler really – you know, has probably the most influence in golf of anyone right now mm-hmm. who's active on the tour. But then you get a 13 – here, go right into the numbers now. Then you get a 13K Scotty Scheffler, 13.3, with no sub-6K pricing. And I thought, okay, okay, there you go. Mm-hmm. Now you now you get some low Scotty Scheffler ownership because you can't play, you know, the $5,200 players. Well, it turns out you can. And pretty, pretty comfortably, right? They missed price four or five – guys in the sixes that I like, that I know you'll probably like, that yeah. makes you a very nice, rich lineup, and you can still have some meat up top in addition to Sheffield. Now, there's the, there's this this course, uh, historically, I have in my notes, is some place where people, they, it's a great scene, people, players love going, it's kind of a getaway. I don't want to say it's a party scene, for some it is, for some it is. To, but it's you, not a party scene for me this week. I'm right down the road, and it's all business grinding tape this week for uh, grinding for the tape. subs as usual. Well, yeah. the best, the best, the best um, role you can play this week is to be out at night scoping out who's having a few cocktails. Right? I'll let you know. We're going to the Sea Pines Resort this evening for dinner, Fuck. which is generally where a lot of the <laughs> The players stay, I, I've been told, or in that area. So, yeah. you know, I will post everything that I see, as always, for the subscribers in, um, in the Discord. It was really helpful this week at the Masters. Um, I'm never going to bat a thousand, uh, but I have I, I've said this. I think that if you told me that I could go to every golf tournament from Monday through Wednesday and be able to spend some time watching these guys and pay attention to their body language. I would choose that over access to any data. Um, and I, and I am like the is. biggest, I'm the biggest data guy that you'll ever meet. So, um, I find this to be incredibly invaluable. Um, I, the big one was Brooks had like the worst nine holes of golf at Augusta that I had seen all week. Um, I, it was literally a scene out of tin cup. Like he could not hit a green. He just kept dropping balls in the fairway and missing greens. Um, and hopefully that, that got a lot of, from what I've heard, a lot of the subs off of, off of Brooks this week, not to say that Brooks isn't going to, no, I did. It helped. It helped me. Yeah. Not to say that he won't be deadly at the next major, but this was a week where he just, he didn't have his best stuff. Um, he actually performed better. And I bet him to miss the cut based on what I saw, and he performed and, better than I thought. And but. that changes day to day, hour to hour, even after you see him in a practice round, right? But again, I've said this before: it's paddock betting and horses. People, I just want to line up behind the paddock, um, and I want to look at how the horse is behaving before it enters the gate, before it walks in the track and parades. I want to see how it's doing because that's the how big does it look? Is it is it expending energy? And that's, I'm glad you said that because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for body language cues. We're looking things going on in their life. What are the, what are the things changing their potential outcome that the data doesn't say? And so this week, you know, I'm thinking, okay, A, there is a fatigue narrative um, after the Masters. 
but Rom won this, right? Rom Rom won this after he now Fitzpatrick won last year. Now Fitzpatrick and and Spieth. And by the way, another little interesting tidbit that I that I found this morning. Go ahead. Twelve of the last sixteen uh, winners of the event the week after the Masters played in the Masters. So I know there's you know a narrative about right. the Masters being a tough walk confirmed it is a tough walk it's it's a grueling event um but a you know guys win the the event after the masters after playing in the masters all the freaking time it, it there's only like, one course that's tougher as a walk capilla yep yeah um ex exactly i mean these guys are used to the grind week to week uh i think a lot of players who may not have performed well last week uh, certainly, or or we're close, or catching form again. Can't lay, for instance, Fleetwood close. I mean, you know, Fleetwood played well enough for me to look at him this week too. Uh, I think it's I think it's worth looking at. It's a, but you do get these oddball winners here, right? You do get guys like completely out of form. Two hundred to one, Kadira. I remember C T Pan, Wes West Bryan, Brendan Grace. That's four years in a row. Um, Stewart Sink. Right, those are all triple digit plus winners, and so I think that's a possibility here, right? Uh, because your guy, you're gonna get the guys coming from the Masters who just kind of want to put their feet up and maybe have a few cocktails, Max Homa, and you know, catch a couple of guys, these guys sleeping. Plus, it's a course that you got to putt pretty fucking well. I mean, look at the guys that have won here: yeah. Spieth, Fitzpatrick, Stewart Sink, Webb Simpson, uh, Kadira. He can putt. Wes Bryan can. Uh, Jim Furyk twice, Matt Kuchar, Graham McDowell, Brent Snedeker, Brian Gay, one of the best putters of all time. So, you know, it's it's a tricky little course. You know, I haven't read your article yet, but from my own sort of eyeballs from over the over the course of watching it, it's it, it's like half tree line parklands, half links-ish type course, really small greens, and you got to be good around them, and you got to putt well. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's tough to predict, but. Where do you yeah. start this week? Yeah. Uh, well, it is it is a very unique singular golf course. Um, I have been playing some golf in the area over the last couple of days in, in the Hilton Head area, Flex. And, um, you know, there are a lot of these overhanging Carolina tree limbs, right? So, you know, this is a less than driver golf course where a guy like Rory McIlroy is not going to be able to just bomb away aimlessly with driver and have that type of advantage that he has at other more wide open golf courses, right? This is a strategic less than driver golf course off the tee where you really need to position yourself on the right side of the fairway to give yourself the correct angle to the green. Um, yeah. and this has some of the smallest greens on the PGA tour. Uh, so as you mentioned, like this is a middle iron and, and putting golf course, right? And you, you do not need to necessarily be an elite driver of the golf ball. You, you really just need to club. And that's not to say that, that bombers can't succeed here. We've seen, you know, I remember this, uh, the year that Kobe, Kobe had a, a big score at this tournament and it was because he faded the narrative that this is not a bombers course. And he played Cam Young and Cam Davis the years that those guys finished top five uh, because people think, you know, those guys are bombers. They're a little wild off the tee. Well, this is a golf course where you just have to club down. So off the tee is actually mitigated for everyone because everybody's going to be taking less than driver clubs and playing to the same places. And the emphasis falls squarely on the second shot. Um, so I, I, I broke this down far more, uh, intensely in my article, but, you know, middle iron play putting around the green play. Um, I, I'll give a lot of updates on weather conditions and wind and, and the firmness of the turf this week, but, um, excited to dive in with you, man. I've, yeah, I've yeah, got I some, I've got some thoughts on this slate. I think it's gonna be fun. Yeah. I remember 2021, uh, Post DJ win, or was that Matsuyama? One of the years. Um, but DJ was so short priced here because the field was kind of weak. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was top 20, maybe. 
Um, I just think Scheffler can win in his sleep at this point. It's whether or not he even shows up. Weather looks okay, early weather. Yeah. Um, but go ahead. I mean, I, I mean, I'm I I'll start in these ranges up top. Um, well, can I just can I just ask? I mean, Scheffler 13 3. Yeah. Is that an easy decision for you this week? I thought it was an easy decision at the Masters. I don't think it's I don't think it's as easy this week. Is that fair to say? Obviously, because of the price increase. Um, this is a good golf course for Scheffler. It's not yeah. as good of a golf course for Scheffler as Augusta was. No. Um, and you know, 13 three, you're knocking yourself out at like I think this is an amazing week for Xander. You know, Xander, yeah. Xander, it's not flop lag because he finished T8. But yeah. remember when everybody thought that Xander was going to win the U.S. Open at Brookline? And he did exactly what he I hated that chair in the Brookline? background, by the way. Sorry, I interrupted you. You're I just good. hated it. You're good. I, hated, I hate the backpack now, but we'll move that in a second. And that light above your head, it's like. It's annoying. Should I turn that off? Yeah, let's do some let's do some room maintenance and we'll come back. Okay. Stand by. Can you filibuster while I go turn this yeah. off? Yeah. Okay. I'll spin around the chair. How many times do I spin around? Over or under. I don't like this. Okay. What's the over under Andy getting back? Let's say 20 seconds. Oh, there he is. Oh, he can't find the switch. Can't find the switch. Got 20 seconds, Andy. I'm taking the under. There he got it. Clutch. You're so, you're so good in the clutch. I had 20 seconds on you to find that switch. You found <laughs> it in nine. Oh, that's so much better. That is better. You're right. Necessary improvement. Um, um Wait, what? let me finish the Xander thing real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I just, he, everybody thought he was going to win at Brookline, myself included. He finishes T8 at Brookline, plays well. And then what does he do the next week? He wins the Travelers on a Pete Dye golf course when everybody's done with this shit. So, you know, the, the argument for no Scheffler is like, I don't think you can really feel good about Scheffler Xander lineups this week. Scheffler can't wait lineups at weeks. I no. think you're you're asking for for four of sixes even if you have the winner. The the uh the difference last week and what makes Masters and I really need to listen to my own rules next year is that you knew what were the winners that I thought could win. Xander, Scheffler, Rom, and then one more, uh, Cole Hammer. And I, you know, you could lock one of those four in the lineup. You knew it was going to be a high priced winner. And then you could eliminate Rom from Scheffler lineups because, you know, you couldn't, uh, couldn't afford other pieces. This week, <laughs> it could be an oddball. It could be a 200 to one. Scheffler could, Scheffler could finish third. And if Scheffler finished third last week, and a ROM one, he's not in the lineup, likely. Uh, but Scheffler could finish fifth. He could be the highest finishing person out of those top prices and still be in the lineup. That's why I even like, you know, Scheffler potentially more, unless he doesn't play. I still like him if he doesn't play. Well, there's no I'm running hot right I... now, by the way. Let me just tell you this. Lex, Lex Park in Lexington are fascists. And if you're listening to the show, Lex Park, you're ruining downtown Lexington. I stopped my car this this afternoon to help a man, my neighbor, at School Sushi, Flex. Best sushi I've heard anywhere. I don't eat it, but apparently it's great because Toyota's in town. And the Toyota plant has a lot of Japanese people come here, and they love it, Flex. So he fell off a ladder in front of me as I was pulling up, and he couldn't get up off the ground. So... Being the good Samaritan that I am, I got out of my car with another gentleman and we helped him into a chair, safely into a chair. He didn't want the help. I gave him the help. I asked him, can I touch you? He said, no, I touched him anyway. <laughs> Safe touching. 
I forgot to put money in my meter, and these these absolute buffoons barnacled my car. So it was immobile, immobilized. And this is Lexington. Go. This is Lexington Park. By the way, I, I sent a bunch of um I think uh, he just got it, Big T, but I sent a bunch. Big T thought I was in Lexington because I said I was going on a, a show with you, but um I sent like a ton of master stuff to Tony to give away for um whatever giveaways that we want to do. And it yeah. just it just arrived at his house. Money. You know what? Yeah. You know what? You know what the there are a lot store, of by the way. I was gonna say there are a lot of great things about the the masters. But what I actually think might be one of the smartest things that they do, first of all, they make their food so underpriced that you feel you feel okay about spending a little bit more in the store, which I think is I think is pretty smart because that store probably makes an absolute killing. I mean, the lines, a line on Thursday morning to the store is two hours long easily um it clears out later in the day but so does some of the inventory but what's so ingenious about the master setup is that they have a shipping center right next to the store so you can buy bag loads of things um and i would have said i'm not buying all this stuff because i don't want to walk around the course with it all day but you can buy bag loads of things and then just ship it directly. So I bought, you know, I bought a ton of stuff that I shipped to Tony to give away to subs. I bought a ton of stuff for like my family and Natalie's family that I shipped back to LA. Um, it's so freaking smart. I, I and I can't emphasize how easy they make it. So you it's know, efficient. not that it's it's, it's large that shirt. Here it goes. It's like the yeah. machine that shoots it right at your face. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. So we're going to give that stuff away this week to Run Pure Sports members only. Cash, merch. Um, yeah. So in the in the top range, then I mean, I don't think Obert ever will quit on on any course. I don't think he'll ever. He's just you know he's yeah. he's it's it's Scotty Obert. That's the next generation. Uh, Shoffley played great. Um, I think he played probably to his ceiling. He uh, played, he, he, you could have set your clocks to it, right? Like Xander T8, an, a somewhat yeah. non Xander T8, a uh, great top 10 bat, uh, never really felt like he had a chance to win the golf tournament. I thought early Sunday that he did. And, he just wasn't making the hero putts he needed to, which is his, you know, he had kind of his game. Um, Cantley surprised me a little bit too. So that was another one where um, I, I don't know if I want to call this a whiff, but one of the things that I, I reported was that, you know, Xander and Cantley played this practice round on Wednesday morning and Xander literally wiped the floor with Cantlay. Like I I'm not being hyperbolic. Xander might've beat them in their little game by like 15 strokes. And then when I was walking off the property on Wednesday night, Cantlay and VJ Singh were the last two men on the range. VJ Singh made cut by the way. So Cantlay was out there on Wednesday night as darkness was approaching grinding out there. And I said to the, the discord, I said, if Cantlay wins the Masters, it's because he found something on the range at 7 p.m. with his coach. Um, and he performed, I mean, he, fin- he finished T22. Um, so he kind of pulled it together. But, um, you know, I, I think we could be probably maybe a little bit more confident about him this week because it seems like it, he was not ready to win that golf tournament from what I saw but maybe the masters could have been a stepping stone for him where things started to come together more for him. That's what I'm and thinking. Now, and now he returns to a golf course that he's had a, a ton of success out of. Okay. Past. So can like, if you're, if you're a form better, um, and of course history better, uh, which you might be coming into a form better, which I like, 
Um, Cantlay, look at Cantlay's performance here. Third, seventh, third, second, third, miscut in between. Okay. Uh, I've, I've, I, you know what? I'm, I'm not that Cantlay played in the final lineup, but he played better than I thought he would, and he was a good price. Looking back, looking back, Cantlay, Morikawa, and Homa were ridiculous prices to talent at yeah. ridiculous ownership, and it was just why didn't I play more? You know, hindsight. But I, I think that you know. I don't. I think his ownership will be okay, but people do like course history, and I mm -hmm. and I've said this in my notes. I put them out on Twitter, but the the course history anti truthers always get punished here because it plays well on this course. I would say that Cantlay would be with Aubert and Scheffler, of course, if he plays, would be up there my top in that top range. Um, I think that Cantlay has found a little bit. And I think that he's someone that really believes that, he, you know, he needs to come back and start winning again, um, in my personal opinion. And that is sort of the 9-7 and up, although I do love Fleetwood. I'm going to be sucked right back in that sewer again for the next two years. Uh, the, the Cam Davis sewer, the Tommy Fleetwood sewer, right back in. Yeah. I was going to ask you that, too, about – you see Morikawa and Fleetwood both have these incredible performances at the Masters. Fleetwood was a core play for me. Morikawa was not. I was kicking myself for that one. Kyle, being the biggest Morikawa guy I know, was kicking himself hugely for that one, where it's almost like the Hideki inverse, where I played, I, I faded Hideki on a gut instinct that yeah. when Hideki makes all of the sense in the world, he's probably due for regression. Don't play him. And when everybody finally decides that Morikawa stinks and he's broken, that's right. when he's probably due for positive regression. So what I was going to ask you was, I think Harbor town is a incredible golf course for both Tommy Fleetwood and Colin Morikawa, particularly Morikawa. Now that it looks like the irons are on the mend, but you're buying both of these guys at an all time high. I mean, who, who are you more inclined to 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 roll with this week of Fleetwood and Mark? Fleetwood goes from seven point five to nine point eight. That's crazy. Yeah, but I love this golf course for him. Like I I I, I almost <laughs> bet Fleetwood this morning at thirty to one, and then I got on my computer to take some notes on some other stuff, and I looked back, and he's twenty to one everywhere. He's he's a better putter, and he has a better short game, probably. Uh, Morikawa better drop, but well, yeah. probably similar, similar, very good drivers of the ball. Morikawa, elite iron player. Um, Fleet, well, Morikawa's won the open too. I mean, in a links style course, so I like them both. I like them both. Um, Fleet, what I found just found something. Uh, yeah, so. There's there's just a lot there's a lot to chew on this week because you could have a bomb winner and then a few of these guys mixed in to your lineup so it's going to be it's going to be difficult because then you've got okay everyone's off to Gala now right he can't play he was terrible he let everyone down he still missed he still made the cut but you know we expected a lot more from Tagala. Uh Cam Young again he he played well but he he just doesn't he doesn't have that closing gear, um, mm -hmm. the iron game, the putting to really make that run. But there they are in the mid eights again. Shane Lowry, real disappointment, right? I think Shane Lowry was in my core. Now mm -hmm. he's at a course, links type. Uh, to me, Shane Lowry could, I think this is very Shane Lowry type course. He's been great here. He's been great. There's it's going to be a very difficult week. See, Wu Kim, another one, 8K now. Mm -hmm. Might as well be 7, 9K. Probably won't be a very much owned because why? Burned people last week. It's all what have you done for me like week to week. Even Sam Burns, horrific last week at the Masters. Now 8 2 won't be owned. So, yeah, Lowry loves Harbor Town. Right. Um, so, you know, you could make a case. You could do a lot this week. You go Scotty up top, have some. Plugs down low. You could go double stud, have some six Ks, 
balanced. You can make a great lineup. I don't know. It's early. Yeah, and not to not to plug the work we're doing at, at RPS too much, but I think this right. is another really valuable week to like, I'm very excited to go to this tournament and see play some body language doctor on the players on Wednesday, because I'm very curious and intrigued to see who is exhaling a little bit after the masters and who is ready to win this week. Now they all should be ready to win. This is over a $20 million purse, but the masters is such a unique and singular week. It's the second toughest walk in golf. As you mentioned, it's, it takes a lot of the out of the players, both physically, mentally, and emotionally, particularly if you contended, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm fascinated to go watch of the big, the big guns, you know, some of these guys in, in the nine K range, who's gearing up for this one and who might be exhaling a little bit. Um, the, the other guy I wanted to ask you about in before we get into the, um, the sevens and the eights, but, uh, you know, Spieth and JT, both guys where I think the stock is really low on them as it should be. Um, if you want to watch a snuff film, go watch the final four holes of JT's round on Friday. It's oh, like God. Rory, Rory's four putt on 13 and JT's final four ho holes on Friday are like, should have an X rating. Like those, that's not safe for, for children. What about um, Bobby's three putt from two feet on? Oh my God. A, another great addition. He just left. He said, I'm not going, I'm not going to here. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that honestly, like, that's what majors should be. Majors should be a mental examination that separate the men from the boys. But of those guys of Spieth and JT that are objectively, you know, quote unquote broken. Yeah, they're not. Great. By the way, Morikawa, we said was broken, myself included, incorrectly yeah. said Morikawa was broken the week before the Masters. So, like, do you think there's potentially some, some value on it? By the way, you could throw this guy into this list because he just tanked so many great lineups for me, but he now shot like 80 on Sunday in the easiest course conditions. Yeah. So of those well, guys I, that have a bad taste in your mouth, who are you most interested in? Well, you know, you talk about Morikawa. There is the, there is the, the, the group of guys that are super talented that really gear up for majors. Okay, fine. If that's the case for JT now or Spieth or Finau, then they would have at least shown something last week. And I, I don't see them coming back and beating this field, yeah. um, knowing that they've got Aubert and Scheffler in their way for the next 20 years. Um, I'm just tired of chasing ghosts that way, like Finau and Spieth. I love them when they're when they're playing well. They're fantastic. You know, it's a fit. They're fantastic brands. Spieth's one of the most exciting players on earth when he when he does well, and he's got crazy, great course history here. Um, I mean, he's going to be low owned at ninety four hundred. That's pretty pricey, a thousand dollars more than his friend JT. JT's eighty four hundred now. JT's eighty four hundred, and he's going to be passed by. You know, he's he's going down to like Jason Day category. Um, Finau, I is just I don't like this golf course for him. No, the only thing that Finau is doing well right now is hitting his driver incredibly. And I don't even think you can hit driver that much on this golf course. So I would rather, I mean, I will say this. I do not think that Justin Thomas should be a thousand dollars cheaper than Jordan Spieth right now. No, I, I do not think that at all. Um, but you know, one of those guys burns, um, burns JT, the gala Finau, Wyndham Clark is, you know, the pendulum committee is meeting on Wyndham Clark this afternoon. Has the pendulum potentially swung too far on a guy that we were collectively saying is like, you know, a top five player in the world a couple of weeks ago. Um, how much do we want to forgive him for missing the cut at the masters in his first experience? That one might be interesting. Although I, I'm not sure I'm in love with the course fit for Wyndham here. Um, but the guys that feel safe, Wiley, the guys that I want to go to here, now I don't know what ownership is going to be, but like Corey Connors, 
Corey Connors, Russell Henley, Siwoo Kim, Chris Siwoo Kirk, Kim. JT Poston. Those guys are on like the Mount Rushmore of short positional golf courses. Yes. Sawgrass, yes. YY, Sedgefield, Sea Island. All of those guys dominate at he, short positional golf courses. He, well, Siwoo Kim also, Pete Dye loves it, like specialist, right? AK mm -hmm. will be low owned because why? He didn't perform. He had an okay Sunday, but he he didn't get to the top ten slash ball striking numbers that we thought he would get to. So, uh, and and Henley. I mean, if you if you were in our Discord over the weekend, I think Russell Henley was the one tilting people the most because <laughs> it was between Russell Henley. Late ad on Russell Henley. He's going to do well in, over top of Kirk, who did actually really well on Saturday. Yeah. Um, that was the price point that. You know, we were really investing heavily a lot of time into. So, uh, Connors, yes. Siwoo Kim, yes, because of Pete Dye. But the, you're exactly right. The guys I put down on my list short positional golf, Kucher types, uh, uh, Furick types, uh, Stuart Sink types, um, Todd Poston, Mackenzie Hughes, stupid price on Mackenzie Hughes. Yeah. No form. Web, where is, Web. is Webb Simpson in this field? 62. Webb is 62. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lick your lips because that's, that's, you know, his last tournament out, he actually didn't finish too badly. But that's what I'm saying is you get these guys in that range that allow for a very good Scotty lineup. And again, you know, one of these guys could pull one off like a Nick Taylor's down there too at six, six. Okay. He doesn't have a lot of form here. Uh, yeah. Didn't play well at the masters, but he's not a long hitter, but he, he is positional. And he plays really well on small greens. Um, Pebble Beach. Putt's great. So, yeah, I mean, come on in. Yeah, Chris McDonald, C. McD. Water's warm on old Webb Simpson. Whereas I'm not chasing ghosts of Spieth and Thomas anymore. Or yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll always chase Webb Simpson. <laughs> you know, the there's one or two guys... I agree wholeheartedly with where your head's at this week. There's one or two guys that I'm surprised that you didn't mention that I want to throw out there as well. Um, Brian Harmon flop lag. Um, yep. I am absolutely willing to forgive Brian Harmon for not playing well at Augusta. I think this is a perfect golf course for Brian Harmon. And yeah. now we're getting, you know, Brian Harmon at 7.8. Brian Harmon is not Denny <laughs> McCarthy. Okay. I just tell you that right now. Brian Harmon is an absolute dog. And I think you're a fish if you play Denny over Brian Harmon this week at the same price. I, I can't the believe the most controversial, controversial things to interrupt you again, but that's my flex this week. It's just interrupting it. <laughs> the most controversial thing I said in the discord, I think it's when we were tilting Henley. Uh huh. I said, there's never been, there's never been a golfer that began with a letter H in their last name. That's been good. And I forget, maybe it was one of one who got on me about Ben Hogan. And so I leaned <laughs> in. I just leaned into the bit that, you know, he was a drunk and he was uh, not as good as anyone said. And I started finding articles that backed it up on Reddit. But the H word for Harmon, yes, I like that. And I had yeah. one more A. Oh, Hoagie. Hoagie at 7K? Didn't play yeah. Masters? He said 7K? You're going to forget about Tom Hoagie, best iron player in the world? I was just looking at my, I'm a bit of a golf history nerd. So I keep like a running list of the greatest players of all time based on their accomplishments. And I like yeah. moving guys up and down. I mean, two of the six most accomplished golfers of all time start with the letter H. Who? Ben Hogan and who else? Walter Hagen. He sucked. Walter Hagen has 11 majors, Wiley. I didn't. He's was playing was playing against plumbers and firemen, yeah, but then there's a big there's a big H there's a big H drop off before you get to Patrick Harrington. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, Harry Varden th that starts with the uh, that begins with the last H, name KJ. H. Yeah. Know the rules. It's last name H. Last name H. Um, the guy that you haven't mentioned that I'm shocked you haven't brought up is our guy Baz. Like, do we just keep riding Baz? The two guys that I'm, I've literally played every single week this season are Bez and Lucas Glover, and it works. Um, yeah. So I, I don't Lucas know. If played we just, well, man. Lucas Last week. played great, and and I watched on Thursday. 
God, it's so packed at the masters. Like there's not, sometimes you're able to go to these tournaments and like on Thursday, you know, don't think I'm crazy. There were gambling purposes, obviously involved. And I knew that trying to catch too much of tiger Rory or Scheffler, I wouldn't be able to see any golf shots. And I, I wanted to see them hit golf shots. So I was following the, um, the Benny on Glover Kirk group slash the, the Sergio, um, it was Sergio Connors and, and Harris English or something like that. I was following those, that group and Lucas Glover hits the ball so freaking straight. Like there's, I mean, it's just such a tight three yard draw every time it, I, it makes sense why he, um, continues to make cuts for us every single week and have some solid finishes. So yeah, Glover at 6.8. I, I, he was kind to us last week at 6.3. I don't see a reason why we stop now. And then again, what about Baz? Like we, we we've, we've all been huge Baz guys all year. Yep. Yeah. I mean, this field is stacked. That's um, you can get Baz at seven, six, you can get Tom Hoagie at seven. I like Baz. I like posting the same thing. Harris mm-hmm. English played well last week. Cam Davis is there again, 7-4. Played well at the Masters. We're back on him. He played. He has course history here. So, M-7-3, right? <laughs> so, can I ask you a question? He's getting I ran, into the sixes now. <laughs> so, so I, ran into, I ran into Willie briefly on, on the Wednesday practice round. Sung Jay was another one of those guys. Uh, you can just if you watch for long enough, you could tell who's playing golf and who's playing golf swing. And Sung Jay was just at the practice putting green hooked up to eight different launch monitors and just chipping around the green for, for hours. First thing in the morning. And first thing when, when he, when you got off at the end of the day, like what's, what's going on with our boy. Cause I feel like Willie can't talk to him. So you just watch Willie stand there, shag balls for him while he just hits the same chip over and over again and then misses the cup by four. And it's like, what, what's going on? Like, I, I think, love Sanjay. I think, this should be a perfect golf course for him. Can I think that's a lot. I mean, I think it's South Korean culture, perhaps, that Willie is, you know, he's there to help and, yeah. uh, and interject when you are asked to, but otherwise – um just don't get hurt out there, literally. Uh, he seems to – him seems to have a lot of the polls. I mean, everything seems to go left. Yeah. Um, and by the way, did you see Fitzpatrick on four? On he Sunday? Did, yeah, that par three. No. He hit it almost to the 5 T. That was incredible. It took about an hour to resolve. Um so so yeah, I mean, but now you're getting M73 probably such not a good oh, price. Amazing. He's a, he's a 9K golfer this year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a 9K golfer that we played, and I, I mean, I certainly somewhere probably the Amex. I bet Sung Jay at like under 35 to one this year. But the, but like the Masters, you have to suspend, you have to suspend what has gone on over the last little while, even week to week, and say. Is M one of the best golfers in the world or has been? Yes. Is he going to be highly owned? No. Okay, what's his price? 7-3. Play him. Um, home approved, he can come back. More Kyle approved, he can come back. Uh, I'm missing someone else in the eights who did the same thing last week. But these are some of the best golfers in the world at discounts. No ownership. You just got to, you know, you got to do it. So, and then Just also, throw. yeah, last guy too. How intrigued are you about Tom Kim's Sunday 66 at the Masters? Saw it, saw the price here, saw it mid range sevens. Um, that came out of absolute nowhere. I know, seriously, it's like Tom Kim is six under today. That was the only reason why I had hope that somebody could maybe go out and post a number with Scheffler. Like if Tom Kim shooting 60 sex, like maybe one of these guys can do something. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a legit 66 too. Like it wasn't a, wasn't like he was out there gaining a bajillion strokes putting. It, it was his irons. Did you see him 
you know, being the thirst bucket of the week as like the first guy to congratulate Scheffler out there. I know they're buddies in, I, in Dallas. I, I noticed that too. He was I the noticed. Ricky. Yeah, he was the Ricky I, guy. He, well, Homer was kind of the Ricky guy too, standing at the clubhouse. Yeah, I saw that and, too. And the only one there, right? Yeah, yeah. That was interesting because you think about Scheffler's crew, Scheffler's Dallas crew. It's Tony Romo, Will Zalatoris, Jordan Spieth, Tom Kim. Um, I thought Tony Romo would have been there because they're great friends. And then Zalatoris, I thought, would have been there too because Spieth maybe got out of there because he missed a cut. But um, I don't know why Zalatoris wasn't there. Zalatoris plays golf with Scheffler like every every week. There were some interesting ones. You pick up these weird things. Do you know that Rom, Finau, and Sahith were roommates? At Augusta last week, Ron. Odd. Ron. Well, Fina live in Arizona. Yeah. yeah, I think Rom and uh, Finau are buddies, but um, you know, Sahith and I, Natalie would be better to ask on whether Finau brought his eight children. But I overheard Sahith was playing a practice round with Zalatoris, and Sahith and Zalatoris's fiancés were talking about their their living arrangements and Sahith's fiance was talking about how um, living with the females this week was interesting. And, and it's like, well, you made, you made your own bed with that one. I feel like you made yeah. <laughs> Sahith. Why'd you? <laughs> no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be staying in a house with seven other kids. That with, mine. with, with I, seven kids. Right. I don't even know if I'm staying in the house with kids that are mine. Um, <laughs> you'll get to that point one day. Um, Someone asked someone asked a good question. And Dub KJ, if your wife is Korean, I think you said that up here. Uh, that's what one golfer told me about, about South Korean golfers in terms of uh, culture. I could be wrong. That I'm just relaying information. Here are the team RBC guys. This is from Ronnie. Ronnie mm -hmm. Belois. It might be Belois because it's American, but in Canada, it's Belois. Interesting names for team RBC golf. If you want to play that narrative, and it's played in the past, uh, Kucher, DJ's played well. The very lead guy on Team RBC is Corey Connors. Then you've got Sam Burns. You've got Sahith. You've got Cam Young. Uh-oh. Uh, you've got Adam Hadwin. Never play him. You've got Mackenzie Hughes, my play of the week. Ooh. you got Webb Simpson, always. Uh, no, you don't. You have Taylor Pendrith, Nick Taylor, again, and I'm going to save this one for last. Team RBC, uh, positional golf, potentially Andy's play of the week is Adam Svensson. How'd you know? <laughs> I know it. I can see it in your fucking eyes. I know. They're glowing. And I can tell. Just, I saw Svensson at 6'6". Six, six. I just wrote it down as like Andy's play of the week. I, I love Svensson. Team oh, RBC, does God. that bounce him up a little more? Yeah, I I cannot wait to. I, God, you can make a pretty good, um, pretty good team RBC lineup. Oh um, my God! I'm huge on Cam Young this week. I I posted um, Cam Young 33 to one this morning in the Discord. Right. And 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 Saul was like, "Are you okay? Like, what's <laughs> <laughs> is everything? Is everything all right? Is Kyle hurting you over there in Hilton Head? But yeah, I, I like." I like Cam Young and, and Spencer. Point to where Kyle touched you and hurt you. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So, my favorite, like, long shot sub 7.5K play this week is Svensson. Yeah. Yours is Mac Hughes. Who's your winner? Um, I think, I think Cantley on course history and form last week. And sort of an urgency to get back to where he was going to the major season. Um, I'm gonna say Cantley wins this week at this point. Instead of Scheffler. I mean, it's the, always the non Scheffler winner. But uh Cantley I like. I like Mac Hughes too. I like Team RBC a lot. A yeah. Lot. I I um I saw twenty four to one on Cantley this morning. Went went away from the computer for an hour or two, and it was down to 18s and 16s. And I'm kicking myself because that yeah, 24, 24 
24 is sounding pretty good to me right now. I'm going to stick with, um, I'm going to stick with Cam Young as my winner at 33 to one as of now, but, but there will be some, some ads to that betting card. He, he did, he is in Dallas. Scheffler's in Dallas right yeah, now. He's in Dallas. But, now but he'll, do you fly back? I mean, you've got yeah. pro-am obligations. You can't miss yeah, those. He, yeah. He flies back and I would have, I mean, at this, at this point, Ted Scott could, could charter the jet himself. I mean, it's just Ted Scott's won um, four masters. What is Ted Scott on the money list right now? If you just Scheffler's won, I mean, I think the he's masters, made more money than Rory. Yeah. I, I would think he's made more money than a lot of good players. I mean, you think about what is Scheffler made between the players, which is the biggest person golf, the masters, finishing second in Houston, winning the Arnold Palmer Invitational, which is another yeah. elevated event. I think you combine those together in the last month, Scheffler's taken in easily $12 million, right? Scheffler's yeah. easily made $12 million in the last month and a half. And so what's caddy rate? 10%. You got to imagine that Chef, there's a 10% for a win, 8%. Let's have that scale, like 10, 8, 5, 3, 1 or something like that. But, um, Sheffler should be tipping, you know, tipping Ted Scott, I would imagine over market. So yeah, Ted Scott's easily I think, taking home. Two I'm going to make a case and this, this could be year, a tweet. You see, you, you see this workshop right now. I'm workshopping a tweet. I think Ted Scott should be in the FedEx cup at East Lake. <laughs> If he's on the, he's made more money than Rory. <laughs> so, what a pairing, though. I mean, Ted's got completely underrated. I think it's, I think it's a perfect combination. Four, four masters. He's got the four. third most masters of all time, right? It's with, Ty, Jack has six, Tiger has five, and Ted Scott has four. With Rory's out. Natalie's saying Rory's out, but I haven't seen that. But he I'm is. I, wait, oh, Rory's. Rory withdrew from this week or just out of our lives? <laughs> I did a quick, I, I hope so. Kobe doesn't look like he's doing too well this morning. He's kind of, you know, when he's angry. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's one of the yeah. Kobe, I mean, Kobe had a $15,000 ticket on Rory. Uh, and he, you know, I, he, he does a master's party every single year. And yeah. the party favors were $50 tickets on Rory for all of his 50 something guests. Now, you know, Rory, uh, Kobe is in position to do things like that because he has had so much success betting and playing DFS golf. But, um, that is, I told Kobe a couple of times that I said, I, I think, I think I've just got to miss it. You know, I, I think if it happens, then it happens. That's great. But I can't, I'm not putting myself through it anymore. I think I'm going to get a lot more peace of mind from just pretending he doesn't exist at these major championships. And if I'm pleasantly surprised, then so be it. But I can't do the, I can't do the runaround again. It takes too much out of me emotionally. You're, you're looking at me like, uh, no, duh. I, like I'm, did you... I'm, I'm looking at Natalie figuring out who Ted Scott caddied before. And I'm making sure that someone answers that appropriately. It's Bubba Watson. <laughs> Bubba. Yeah. But I'm not. She, she, you, she may, you may have. Re yeah, you may have revealed, exposed me that I look at the comment section way too much. When I do too. Oh, well, it's a fun that. comment section. It's a. Fun oh, I know. I know you completely. You completely go white noise on what I'm saying every time, and at the end of when I say something, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. I like that guy too. <laughs> <laughs> Good play, Wiley. Well yeah. done. Hey, Andy, go jump off a pier. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, I, um, uh, who's your winner? Did you say who your winner was? I by said, the way? I said, I, I was hoping nobody heard. I said Cam Young, but I was hoping. Oh, yeah. Was that was listening. a test. I was paying attention. Yeah. I was um, hoping nobody was listening. We said, we said Cam Young and Patrick Cantlay. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'm familiar with that feeling, Wiley. Oh, she's uh, we, talking. She, well, she's talking about when I tune. Yeah. Tune when, out, right. when she thinks that, which I don't ever tune her out. I'm always listening, but. Uh, anyway. uh, all right, vomit, ghost jammed, not happy. That's Can't B, yet. ghost jammed, yeah. B. Some Discord insider talk. All right, all right, we'll talk later. Thanks, brother.